Naturally, individuals of same species can breed with each other to form a new individual with characteristics of both the parent individuals. Many a times it is desirous to combine useful characters or traits of two different but closely related species to give rise to a hybrid plant. This process is called as hybridization. But not all species can be bred or crossed to form a hybrid due to various level of incompatibility barriers. Also, some plants do not produce seeds or viable seeds, therefore making their hybrids naturally is not possible. In today's video, we will learn about an important plant tissue culture method called as somatic hybridization with which we can make hybrids of even sexually incompatible plants and also of the plants which do not produce seeds, for example, banana. First, we will have a look at its basic principle, then we will learn in a step-by-step -step manner how it works. And at last, we'll see some of the major advantages and limitations of somatic hybridization. Using plant tissue culture techniques, the incompatibility barriers to crossbreed unrelated species can be overcome to generate hybrids. The method is called as somatic hybridization in which protoplast of two different species can be fused with each other to form a hybrid cell that later give rise to a hybrid plant. Let's see in a step-by-step -step manner how somatic hybridization actually works. The first step is isolation of protoplast. Generally, leaves or callus are used to isolate protoplast. The cell wall is removed mechanically by fine chopping or enzymatically using cellulase, pectinase or mesrozyme to obtain protoplast. Enzymatic methods is superior over mechanical chopping as number of protoplast obtained are large and cells are injured less. The next step is fusion of protoplast of two species. Once the cell wall is removed, it becomes easier to fuse the protoplast and their genomes. The protoplast may fuse spontaneously without any aid or they can be induced by external means, but spontaneous fusion has low success rate. The most common method of inducing fusion of protoplast involves use of chemicals known as fusogens, for example polyethylene glycol or PEG and sodium nitrate. Another method of doing this is by electrofusion, in which electric shock is given using a dedicated instrument. These two methods show higher success rate compared to the other methods. During fusion, the two protoplasts come close together and adhere to each other. Next, the membrane of two protoplasts fuses, followed by formation of a heterocaryon. The heterocaryon has nucleus and cytoplasm of both the protoplasts. Therefore, the chromosome number of the hybrids are doubled. But there are also high chances when protoplasts of the same species fuse to form a homocaryon. Therefore, it becomes important to screen and select hybrid protoplast or heterocaryons. But there are instances when only cytoplasm of both the species fuses, but nucleus of only one species remains. Such type of hybrids are called as cytoplasmic hybrids or cybrids. Then comes the selection of hybrid cells. Only a small fraction of cells hybridizes which makes it necessary to select them. Hybrid cells can be isolated manually under microscope if they have a unique character or they can be selected on a specific growth media having particular selection condition. High throughput screening of hybrid cells can also be done using flow cytometric methods. More details about flow cytometry can be found in my dedicated video on it. Next comes developing a hybrid plant. Using optimized plant tissue culture protocols, the hybrid cells are allowed to form callus, regenerate shoot root and then form an entire plant. The somatic hybrid plants can be confirmed using various techniques for example using molecular markers like RFLP, AFLP and RAPD. If the plant shows a bending pattern of both the parents, it will be a hybrid plant. To learn more about markers and its various types, you can check out my videos on them. The most important advantage of somatic hybridization is that you can make hybrid of sexually incompatible species. Also, you need somatic cells to make a hybrid and there is no need to wait long for reproductive stage. Talking about limitations. Sometimes hybrids produced by somatic hybridization may not produce viable seeds, making it difficult to propagate it naturally. 
Plants obtained from one somatic hybridization event often have soma clonal variation or variability in their genetic composition. The plants may not be genetically stable. Selection methods of hybrids are not that efficient. As somatic hybridization is a random event, it may lead to production of undesirable hybrids. Also, as somatic hybridization is not a natural process, you need to use sophisticated plant tissue culture methods to generate hybrids. So that's all for the today's video. If you find the video useful, do share it with others. Comment for queries and suggestions. Subscribe to stay connected for more such videos. You can check out my other interesting videos on plant tissue culture, markers, research and publishing, techniques and others. Finally, thanks and see you in my next video.